French Polynesia is the world's largest shark sanctuary. Here they are protected from finning, from shark culls, but that doesn't mean they are safe. There is one threat to sharks we have not paid much attention to, one not even a sanctuary can stop, climate change. The Physio Shark Project at the Creob Lab on the island of Mo'orea is studying the effects of temperature change and oxygen deprivation on sharks. I visited their lab, where important research is occurring, to find out not only what the threshold for sharks is during environmental changes, but how this affects them surviving other factors, like human impact. My, uh, for my PhD research, I'm working on the effects of climate change on the physiology of newborn black tip new sharks. So it's certainly fairly new information that climate change is going to be uh, is going to be a threat that sharks will fa are facing now and will face into the future. Now, some people think that uh, for some species of sharks, these animals are highly migratory and that they should be able to find um, uh, better conditions, cooler waters. Um, but we're starting to find out that that might not be the case. Um, in, in some cases, we expect that what's called the oxygen minimum zone. This is a layer uh, in the ocean where there's no oxygen. Uh, this is going to get larger and it's going to get shallower and push sharks uh, closer to the surface where they might be uh, more likely to interact with fishing gear. Also for those species that aren't uh, as highly migratory and that rely on very specific small habitats to survive, as the conditions of those habitats become worse and worse, um, we really don't know how these animals are going to be affected. Um, we need to understand that better. Um, and then there's really just a general need for more uh, climate change driven research with elasmobranch populations to get the public aware that this is a major threat. Along with fishing, along with pollution, uh, habitat loss uh, and culling, this is a major threat that needs to be considered. What we're beginning to find with regard to temperature is that these black tips um, are quite sensitive to temperature. The animals that are acclimated to temperatures that they experience currently, uh, they can withstand temperatures up to about 37 to 39 degrees, at which point it becomes too hot for these animals to function and serve a meaningful ecological role. That means that these animals might not be able to hunt effectively or even avoid predators if they live in an environment that's too hot. Ian suggests that even if the climate change could be tolerated by the sharks, the rising stress levels has the potential to take away their threshold for injuries and accidental catch, making them far weaker to human impacts. Also finding from other studies in the lab though, is that as temperatures get warmer, um, even a couple degrees, up to 33 degrees, uh, three degrees above the average, the animals can still survive, they can still go about their, their, uh, their, um, kind of their daily routine, uh, but if they're exposed to an extreme stressor, something like getting caught uh, in fishing gear, which in Morea this would be a case of accidentally getting caught, um, that has the potential to be fatal. Um, so such a small uh, elevation in temperature can have uh, lethal consequences for these animals when they're exposed to extreme stress. Uh, the repercussions of that are huge. When we expect, um, as, uh, you know, as under the business as usual scenario for climate change, uh, a two to three degree increase above the average temperature, if today's sharks are living at 33 degrees, uh, there's, a, there's a chance that there could be an impact on the population resulting you know, as a result of potentially increased juvenile mortality. It's my first time working with the baby sharks, joining this project. I was actually working with the rays before. And um, it's, yeah, they, they're incredible. Like, I mean, I was actually quite amazed because you think it's a tiny little shark and oh, look at this little mouth, it's not gonna do anything. They, like, you have to be really quite careful if you're handling them and everything. So that was quite intimidating at first, but then um, working with them and getting used to them and checking on them every day, it's like, they're, they're really, they're really awesome sharks. They're really beautiful sharks as well. And um, being able to sort of get this really important data from them and then releasing them is, is like a really great sort of experience for us as well because we know um, we're getting them back into the wild and, um, and they generally do quite well even after being, being here once we release them and stick. It's, it's a really exciting project to work with as well because we're just in the beginning of 
get growing now. So there's um, there's a bit of a momentum building for this project for the sharks. Um, by doing this project really well, it'll be a platform for future research related to sharks and their vulnerability to climate change and what we can do to basically um, do the best to protect them in the future. Once they have conducted their test, the sharks are fed a good meal and released back into the wild to continue their journey. It is estimated we can expect a further 2.6 to 4.8 degrees Celsius warming by the year 2100. A further decrease in pH, decreases in dissolved oxygen and more dead spots of low oxygen in our oceans. The most dangerous and terrifying predator is the one we cannot see, the one we cannot ignore. It's climate change. These tiny little miracles, these adventurous and brave little creatures, and the important work at the Physio Shark Project are providing an insight into our changing world and the consequences that may come. The changing oceans will cause our sharks to change as well. Will the smaller population of sharks here die with climate change? Will they move? Will it have catastrophic effects on the apex predators and change the way this entire ecosystem functions? Or will they adapt? Perhaps the scariest thing is not knowing how our world will change. But the only thing we can be sure of, change is imminent.